Wait a minute, I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing uh, and where I'm at. Uh, well, number one, thanks for having me here. I'm glad you all are here. Right? I'll start that off, make sure there's no misunderstanding about that. And I don't know exactly where we're going to go because I kind of make this stuff up as I go along. Right? I always say it up front, you know, I'm crazy, right? <laughs> so if I say anything that you don't agree with, right? I'm not trying to start shit, right? I'm just, just crazy, right? And uh, unfortunately, if you don't understand that, then you're not. <laughs> but anyway, I'm gonna start by reading some poems and we'll see where we end up. Moments or shapes. And then life is a decision we make. And moments are the shapes those decisions take. And evolution is a way of wandering through time. Somewhere between death, somewhere between birth, someplace before death. Something from the past today brings for tomorrow. Wander dizzy or wander alert and wonder about what? Could be some leftovers from the next last go-around. And when the merry-go-round isn't feeling that merry, time to remind the tears a smile is just a smile away. Laughter brings us memories waiting for us to happen in realities of catching up to where we've already been. Through the good and the bad and the way flux fluxes. And nothing's been done that hasn't been done before. So the redoing is about redoing the same, but different. And the ride is a hell of a ride, if that's the ticket we buy. Insane ideas of pain is more acceptable than pleasure. And ideas of guilt by birth are what makes it acceptable. Turning light that's supposed to be bright into a burden of walls and dead ends and windows behind locked minds. While well, in a conspiracy of reality, the moon and the stars join with the sun in a sending of more light or replenish. Every day brings more chances to ride the ride different. Every breath we take can be fresh breath in many ways. And in the choices between depressings and blessings, what we decide is what we create is our show to star in. that we couldn't slay. <clears throat> How many little girls are disguised as women? How many little boys hide in the lies of men? How many times are our short-term plans really the realities of our long-term plans? Looking to the times when crazier than hell and happier than hell are in the hookup, giving times and memories something more to carry through times of something less. Those dances that love takes with chances have no choice when that music plays. What is it about falling madly in love that makes falling and mad lie desirable? Getting caught up in the startling between getting caught and not getting caught, like a fugitive and not knowing why. Who makes up the rules to be broken? In the buried multidimensionals, where doesn't give a damn, doesn't give a damn, the vanity of choice can go many ways in determining the prices to be paid. Underneath the dark shadows of scare, chasing the dazzle of rainbows and gold, always one step ahead or one step behind, feeling the breath of childhood monsters, those leftover dragons that we couldn't slay. Between prayers and recklessness, when looking back at when the sky fell down and the earth fell up in the middle of him and laughter screamed at the tears, tears couldn't cry and tears all up held on to laughter in a mad escape. Living between prayers and recklessness disregard in when close is a distant faded memory fading with what's, what the used to be's loud calling his name until the silence was a chaos of deafening roar. How to get through what you can't get through when words, words can't explain their sounds 
Inside his head it was all a blurring rush of time, any way time can drag slow motion beyond fast. There were times when he flew in his own haze. There were times when want women in weed carried him through the wander with immediate in his face, looking, looking at him like a mirror without reflections. Dull, shining, pulling from the peaks of abyss. The mind can heal or torment at the same time. How long does time last when time can't forget, remembering what he didn't want to remember? First and last resorts, trusting to drift in the wind, looking for salvations with weaknesses as wings, attempts at giving strength a chance to recover, the ways instinct knows how to find its own way, and survival takes over in ways of outlasting. So, uh, so I don't know how much sense that makes to you, but hold on here, I have a dilemma. <laughs> Be careful because I always spill this stuff. But anyway, part of what I kind of want to go into is about who we are. We're human beings. I don't know how many of us identify as human beings. I don't know how many of us that's our conscious identity that we really identify with, but, but that's our basic primary identity. And if we don't really understand that identity, then we're not going to understand, really going to understand anything else that's going on. And we live in, we live in an industrial machine that harvests energy. Takes that. An industrial machine that lives off of the energy that's generated by the earth, and we are shapes and forms of the earth, so that energy, <laughs> it lives off the energy generated by us. But a part of what makes all of that mind process possible is it's very important that we don't recognize and understand who we are, because if we would recognize and understand who we are, then they can't really do the mining of our energy. So we live in a civilizing process where the identity of a being a human being is a threat to the reality of the mining process. As industrial civilization has historically emerged everywhere it went, all of the human beings that identified themselves as human beings were traumatized by industrial genocide until they forgot they were human beings and they became something else by identity. So what they do is they take the human being, the identity of the human being, our natural identity, the identity that is our relationship to the reality of power, the reality of being, the reality of power. So that identity becomes suppressed in our consciousness and it becomes replaced with a victim identity. Now see, unfortunately, victim identity is now gender, race, age, right? and then it goes into subcategories after that. You know, if you identify as a woman, you feel like a victim. You identify as a man, you feel like a victim. Women may not understand that the same way, but trust me, all right? And, and by race, you feel like a victim. So we start to participate in our own reality from the identity of a victim, right, rather than the identity of a human being. Now, a human being, our bone, flesh, and blood are made up of the metals, minerals, and liquids of the earth. We are shapes of the earth. Everything and everything, everything on this in this dimensional reality that we're in is made up of the same metals, minerals, and liquids. Human, but we're human beings, so we have being. This whole idea: how many times have you said or heard people say, "I'm only human"? Well, see, that's just a very confused, <laughs> you know, a very confused interpretation and recognition of self, because you only recognize a half of yourself when you say, "I'm only human," and that's the whole point of the industrial mining process to get us to not recognize the being part of human. Because the being part of human is where our power comes from. Our power doesn't come from, our power comes from the energy, the essence, the being, spirit. Spirit, being. Now our being, humans, we're made up of the same metals and minerals and liquids of the earth. So all things in the earth made up the same stuff. As humans, we have being. 
Our being comes from our relationship to the sun, sky, universe. But all things of the earth have the same relationship to the sun, sky, universe, so all things of the earth have being. Our energy, our spirit, all things have being. But when we are locked in a dimensional, a dimensional distortion where we only recognize ourselves as human through a victim identity, then, then we're disconnected from the reality of our power. And then we've been programmed to chase the illusions of power. The illusions of power. Vote. That's an illusion. That's got nothing to do with power. All right? Accumulation of wealth and money. That's, that's got nothing to do with power. That's an accumulation of wealth and money. All right? Bigger, more, be more violent. Have bigger armies, bigger bombs, all that stuff. All right? We're told those things represent power, but they are not power. They are illusions of power. They are actually author violent authoritarian systems, right? That have actu actually have nothing to do with the reality of power, because those violent authoritarian systems cannot imprison a blizzard. They cannot imprison an earthquake. They cannot imprison real power. But real power has to recognize itself that it is power, us. So they say to us. So I, I came out of the '60s and stuff. You know. Uh, I mean, I come from way before then, but <laughs> I was old enough to run around on my own in the 60s. And I remember the deal, power to the people. You know, power to the people. And we didn't understand what we were saying. It should be power of the people, <laughs> right? Because we already got power. It's just that we don't recognize it. So I guess in some symbolic way, you don't, if you don't recognize it, you don't have it. But in reality, to me, no, you do have it. You just don't recognize it. Power. So we need to have an understanding understanding about what the reality of power is and its relationship to us as individual human beings. Power, you want to know how much power you got? Through your fears, doubts, and insecurities, how bad can you make yourself feel? When you're feeling that you're most powerless, how miserable can you make yourself feel? And then how does that affect the people you interact with? That's power. That's power. But we don't recognize it as power. That's the power of disoriented, dis, disjointed, incoherent, in, the disjointed, incoherent use of our intelligence. That's it. Now let's think, if we used our intelligence with clarity and coherence, used our intelligence to think, we would generate an entirely different kind of power. If I can affect people with my, with my depressed, low self-esteem, I guarantee you I can affect people all right, with clear thinking and self-recognition. This can be done. This is the power that they're afraid of. This is the power, this is the power that no state, none, none, it can't stand up to this power. But it can stand up, it can stand up to us because as, we don't recognize that we have that power. The power in our intelligence. You know, because when I look at it, you think, alternative energy. See? Am I just an observation, not a judgment, right? an observation? How can we really condemn the bad guys for misuse of energy if we don't understand and respect the power of our intelligence and use it clearly and coherently? Then, you know, then we're, then, you know, I mean, so we got to look at some of this stuff non judgmentally, but recognize reality. If I don't take responsibility for my intelligence and use it as clearly and coherently as I possibly can, then what makes me different from the bad guys other than scale? Because I'm destroy, I destroy myself. Right? So what makes me different than the bad guys other than scale? It's like uh, the spiritual aspect of reality. I do not understand how we can make a true spiritual relationship to our own spirit, the spirituality of creation, if we don't show respect to our intelligence. We can get them. We we can say all the little prayers we want. Thank thank you, Creator, or thank you, you know, for the trees and all the things that fly, or thank you for this and that. But if we don't respect our intelligence, then we're just going through the motions. There is no inner. There's no power to the thing. It's all just been depowerized. If we don't understand, it's almost like if we're it's, like, it's almost like if we give thanks for life. If we truly give thanks for life. It's almost automatically the second thing should be giving thanks for our intelligence because that's what we were given in order to use to use that intel creative ima creative imagination our intelligence the power of our intelligence that can take us down. This was the this was energy the power that we were given to maintain a balance in the natural world. 
These are we have to really look at ourselves and recognize ourselves. And I'm, you know, because now taking responsibility for our intelligence. <coughs> Taking responsibility for our intelligence. We need to understand there's a difference between thinking and believing. Everything in this dimensional reality is about energy. When we think, we generate electromagnetic energy. Thought is the, is the projection of electromagnetic energy goes off into a vibratory reality. But everything is about energy. Everything is about energy. So when we think, when we project this electromagnetic energy, this energy flows off into the universe. It flows the way energy is naturally intended to flow. Now the mining process, this, this imprinting through civilization and the mining process of civilization, encounters the human beings and then it traumatizes them until it stops thinking as a human being and believes in what the trauma is imprinting upon them. Think about this. Every low self-esteem that you have, did you think it up? Or did somebody put it there repeatedly until you believed it? Believe it. And remember, thinking is energy flowing. Electromagnetic energy going out there in the universe. Now, believing is that same energy taken, all right, and through the trauma of genocidal civilization, and every human being was affected by it, but through the trauma of genocidal industrial truth civilization. That, that energy of thinking was converted into, converting energy, now remember electrical system, converted into an energy of belief. Now the thing about the energy of believing is that believing is like a cage. It's like a jail. It's like a container. So the energy of thinking is put into this container of belief. Because see, believe means, I mean in actuality, believe means I don't know. You know, but we're not going to say that, so we say, I believe, right? But we might as well just be realistic and say, I don't know, because that's basically what we're going to... But anyway, it's taking the energy, that electromagnetic energy, and putting it into a container, a limiter. But it's energy, because all... The, it's limited because all beliefs are limited by their biases their, their, and their prejudices. See, they're limited by that. All right? And generally, those biases and prejudices are all anchored around fear. So anyway... This, but it's energy. So this energy is taken and put into this limiter, but it's energy, it can't flow anymore, but it has to intensify because it's energy. So it intensifies and then it erupts through the stresses that become our fears, doubts, and insecurities. Then that's how it leaks out. See, so they're always siphoning our energy so that we can never effectively use it. Because we're, we've been programmed to believe, and we haven't been taught to think. And hand in hand with that program to believe and not thought to think, right, is judgment and recognition. As a human being, it is our responsibility to use our creative intelligence to think and to recognize reality with that thinking process. We are imprinted to believe and to judge. But judging, again, is the same thing as believing. It's, it's, it's a limiter. It's, it's a container that's has its biases, its prejudices, it has all of those things. See, so when people judge, they can't see what's going on <laughs> beyond the judgment. When people believe, they can't think beyond what's going on, the belief. This is all about energy. Understand this, this is about energy. We're being mined, all right? We're, like, we're electrical systems being mined by, a, by, an electrical, <laughs> by an electrical industrial technologic perceptional of reality. So how we consider, recognize ourselves, our responsibility, show respect to our intelligence, and how, show, to show respect to our creators through, by respecting our intelligence, and how do we respect our intelligence? We respect our intelligence by using it to think clearly, coherently, and to recognize the reality that we are in. Dressing up easy. In those times, he, couldn't, he just couldn't help himself then jumped right into trying to get it fixed. Only to hear later he could have done different. How could they know when they weren't there? Then again, sometimes some weaknesses are some strength's way of coping sometimes. <coughs> that need to get close to the fire gets too close. 
as a way of fending away the dark and the cold. Life tossed into the mixture of density and light. And what matters, what's the matter with matter, with all this weighing down and breaking of light, a fragment of sparks chasing through our minds, and parts of what he can't remember what he did, or some parts he figures are looking out for him, and some parts of what he can remember what he did have no complaint with how this system works. Life traveling between yesterday and tomorrow, he took the hard way more than he took the easy. Nothing is deliberate when you don't know better. Sometimes hard can fool you by dressing up easy. Whatever living is about, we got to live to live it. We're going to make mistakes, going to do rights. There's going to be laughter and going to be tears. There are going to be feelings that need to be felt. Feel life's experience. Don't judge it. Recognize it. In the middle of time. It was when he woke up in the middle of a dream, in the middle of the night, in the middle of a life, in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of time. Everything started to get more interesting then. The many ways some people carry their hurting. Lifetime spent getting used, trying to dull pain, accumulating distractions almost like addictions, shooting up self-blames and fears like habituals. In a using of a phrase like high-octane uncut junk, fast-falling psychological lows into familiar's rush, becoming our own dealers, we open up our closets, get into our private stashes for our trip of the day. Hallucinations of there's something wrong with us, imprinted from birth that pain is part of God's love and God loves us even though we're guilty of sin and our mistakes make us the bad or the inferior. With pleasure is the sin, so pain is the way to go. Because of the because, we will always be guilty. We deserve to be punished because they say so, using emotional smack with chaos as a sedation. Distorted reflections of ourselves into black holes, painting us in dark thoughts and negative images, into cages of believers of we are damaged goods, therefore suffering is our main entitlement. And the farther we follow them, the more we feel more lost as they lead us away from the reality of our spirit into the abyss they say leads to heaven and gold, but away from the pleasure of appreciation of life or the pleasure of seeing each day as opportunity and the pleasure of free thinking or the pleasure of feeling good about oneself or the pleasures of learning from our mistakes or the pleasures in recognizing ourselves in the power of our creative or the pleasure of pleasure as blessings that heal. I sit in a little room and just go mad for days and days. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I may be the only one sitting in a room, but I'm not the only one going mad. <laughs> you understand, I'm recruiting crazy. That's really what this is all about. Is just, don't trust me. <laughs> the scheme of things. Sometimes you remember, sometimes, handed out unexpected, expect, unexpected, unexpected. Tossing chaos into un tossing chaos into expected unexpecteds, in dualities of lives without expectations. Pretty much his attitude about that is there is no, no need for anyone to be putting their or any other expectations on him. Ways way he sees it, their expectations are theirs. Too many times expectations get in the way when someone's put them on someone else. Some kind of off the rack that doesn't really fit. Loose fitting binds from their own distortions. Or some expectations can only be laughed at. Like fantasies in the larger scheme of things. Fantasies and expectations can be like chains. Mental restraints for imaginations and dreams. So maybe one of the things about expectations is about the responsibility to and of ourselves. The expectation to recognize our authenticity, an expectation to authenticate our responsibility. And the unexpected are life's way of talking. Responsibility with responsibility is the reality, telling us to be alert to the reality of who we are. Not put our responsibilities on someone else's in the disguises of expectations for them to fill. Glad to be thought. I, I'm reading these rough because 
Anyway, I don't prepare well. Uh, a lot of what happened had to do with his me's. His me's from the past and his me's from the future. He used any present for their battleground, like in some challenge to paradise. Who knows whatever gets settled, or even if, or when, or where, or why. The way some started, started on their own. No apparent beginning with no apparent end. Running off in any ways. Looking for any place where the heart won't hurt. When times held close fall into far away times. Someone's learned to cry about how life isn't fair. Until learned how to cry, learns to cry every day. Where all those things that could have gone right don't mean a thing to all the things that can go wrong. What doesn't anything mean in the fall of mirrors? Images and illusions crashing against themselves. Fast, slow cutting through psyches in acceleration. Dividing selves into selves. Doubting their authenticity until meanings take dominance over understandings. Life could be a random thought. Glad to be thought. Occasionals thrown at the mix of believes, believes. Opportunities or chances to take some thinking trips. Help in feeling a way through emotional stuns, seeing back from the future, back, seeing back from the beyond where the future lives. It's uh, yeah, you know, so we, so a part of this recognizing who we are as human beings, we have to understand there's nothing wrong with us, right? There's nothing wrong with us. That's just reality. Don't confuse the. It, it's important. It's important that we like ourselves. Mm -hmm. See, none of the rest of this can ever happen the way we want it to if we don't like ourselves. I guarantee you that. All right. If we don't like ourselves, this is why it's important to understand there's nothing wrong with us. All right. Don't confuse doing th wrong things with something being wrong with you, because the wrong things we do almost, almost, 100 percent. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a guess and say 100 percent. We were all traumatized somewhere. When that first trauma hit, right? And it usually happens young. This is part of the mining process. Traumatize us young because you, before the trauma, we can go anywhere we want, we can do anything we want with our intelligence. I guarantee you, it's all real. Mm -hmm. Then the trauma comes in and now we're trapped in the human. See, but before that, we're human and being. We can do, we can access the being realities. Then a the trauma comes, right? Whatever form it takes, right? And then we get trapped in the human. The trauma. Now, when you look at it, everything's energy. So if I take a stone and I throw it into a pond or I throw something into an energy field, all right, there's going to be a ripple. So when we get traumatized, see, and the trauma is generally it happens young, and it, and we're being told all this stuff, original sin. We're being told all this stuff, all right, telling us that there's something wrong with us. You know, the unfortunate thing is this: it's a mental disease, and each generation passes it on to the next generation, and nobody understands that that's what's going on. Right? But about nothing wrong with us. So we get traumatized. And then as a reaction to that trauma, usually as a reaction to the trauma, the first thing is we think there's something wrong with us because it happened to us. And then therefore, we take, we, we take blame on ourselves. And then, and then generally out of that, that's now our perception of reality has become distorted. The victim, I, and the victim distorts. So anyway, the ripple effect. So we react. At some point, we react to the trauma by making, by making, by doing what the trauma implanted in there. So we react to it, all right? And, and then, which cre creates more reactions, all right? And, and all of it, we judge. We judge it from the beginning. We've judged ourselves, all right? Then it all turns into judgment, right? And we keep sending that. We keep sending that. And we keep sending that. So now we're spreading all of that around. We're spreading that that distorted version of ourselves, that there's something wrong with us. But the reality is, something happens to us. We react to it. And we don't understand our reaction. See, we don't, it's nothing deliberate. <laughs> we're, we're, we've been disoriented. We've been, we've, we've been dazed. We've been disoriented. We've been traumatized. So we have these reactions, all right, that, that kind of carry the behaviors of the trauma that was implanted in us. But this is why we have intelligence, the power of our intelligence, the, 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 the understanding to recognize reality, 
to recognize ourselves, recognize reality. So, so look at whatever the trauma is, look at it. Number one, did we ask for it? We didn't ask for it. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with us. All right? And we got to go back to the, we got to understand what happened and then what we did as a result of that was a reaction. And it's unfortunate that we did wrong things or whatever they are as a reaction to what happened. But we have a responsibility to recognize our lives and who we are and what happened and then we can change that. We alter it. It's like, you know, I like myself. I don't always like what I do, but I like myself. Right? And the thing, but what my deal, <laughs> my main deal is, you know, is I never lie to myself. I might lie to you, but I ain't lying to me. Right? <laughs> and it, well, then it reduces my chance of lying to you. Right? It protects us all. But I don't lie to myself, all right? And the most dangerous lies are self-justification and self-rationalization, all right? Those are the most dangerous lies of all, all right? Because, you know, it's like, the way I say this as a native person, they told me, someone told me, they tried to get me to understand, well, it was just a little white lie. What do you mean a little white lie? You know, give me a break, all right? That's a big lie right there. Yeah. That they're little. Yeah. <laughs> right. And it's not racist, all right? It's not even racial. I didn't think it up. I heard somebody told it to me. Well, it's only a little white lie. And it was a white person that said it to me because they were the one telling the lie. Right? <laughs> anyway, I'm confusing myself. <laughs> Excuse me. So we should always be real to ourselves. If we're going to do a thing, then at least be real to ourselves about why we're doing it. You know what? At least be real to ourselves about why we're doing it. And then if we can't live with it, it'll evolve out of the behavior pattern. And if, it, right, if it's uncomfortable but we can live with it, then live with it. <laughs> you know, and everything will take care of itself because it's in us defining our own reality. See, this is why it's important to be real, recognize ourselves and be real to ourselves because otherwise we'll never be the ones defining our own reality. Our, our, all right, the judgers and the ones that put all, <laughs> all of the negative things in us, they're the ones that are defining our reality. The state, the religions, all right, the class systems, all of these things, all right, because they're the... So it's important, all right? And the other thing I want to put to this about, talking about, about our intelligence. See, I grew up now. I just remember, it's like I feel like we're in a time where everybody wants to know the answer, you know? And... It's the wrong approach. <laughs> Take the time to understand what we know. Right? Worry about understanding what we know. Because we've been imprinted through the educational system, through the whole system. All right? To just, to know answers, but not to really understand it. Do I know how a TV works? Yeah, you plug it in, you turn it on. Do, do I understand how they get all them people inside there? No. I never will. Right? There's a difference between knowing and understanding. All right? And everybody's in such a hurry to know something all right, that, that we don't understand. We don't understand ourselves. We don't understand. And I think so. As a human being, we have the gift of intelligence. As our power is manifested through that intelligence, how we perceive reality. So we have the gift of intelligence. All right? The ability to create through our intelligence. We have, that we have that gift. We have the responsibility to maintain a balance, to recognize ourselves. You know, because, you know, freedom. You know, I, 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 somewhere back in my disoriented days, or I was disoriented differently anyway, you know, I, I remember jumping into a lot of freedom parades, you know, and I, I regret that. You know, people ask me, what do you regret? You have any regrets? Yeah, I regret that. Right? There's, I regret telling people to be proud. I, I, got, I do have my regrets because the, when I when we go out and try to get something done, it's the proud people that get in the damn way. Right? You know, how many times have you seen people pride mess a thing up, even in your own self? Right? When we're talking about a spiritual reality of humility. But how do pride see? You know, they beat us up. They beat the human beings up, turned us into victims, and they chased out the humility and replaced it with pride. I mean, this is my kind of understanding of what happened. Now, freedom. Why does it end in dumb? Think about it. Why does freedom end in dumb? Dumb. D-O-M. Taken from the Latin to dominate. Why do they put dumb, that dumb, in behind the word freedom? I understand being free, but I don't understand freedom. I really don't. We live in a, we live right here, America. All right. Free. What's free? Somebody pays when you're born. 
Somebody pays money when you die. Somebody pays to put you in the back in the ground. And if you don't have money in between the morning and the dying and being put back in the ground, you're going to die. <laughs> you don't have any money. So I mean, let's just, that's what I mean, use our intelligence clearly and coherently. I mean, <laughs> it's obvious that we're being, you know, this freedom. So remember now, it's, a, it's an energetic reality we're in. And you know, so it's a vibratory reality. Vibratory reality. So every sound you make, all right, thought projects an electro, an energy that has a vibratory. Sound we make projects a vibratory, a, a vibratory energy. And I think, see, in a human being, when they understand who they are, the sound they make, it synchronizes with the thought. All right? That, see, this is what balance, because it's all about balancing the human and the being. So it balances. See, that's the way it's supposed to work. But when, but when we're thinking in terms of liberty and being free, but we use the word freedom, we're not synchronized. We're not synchronizing. Because freedom is a lie. <laughs> right? It's like, it's like oming. I'm not saying that oming is a lie, so I don't want anybody jumping on me about this. All right? But I'm saying there are certain chants you make, all right, and they kind of dull the, uh, they dull the senses, right? They kind of neutralize and sedate. You see, freedom, see, freedom sedates by getting people all excited and emotionally reactionary, right? And it gets them to accept any lie. I mean, seriously, you know, it gets people to accept any lie as long as you add freedom to it. Right? They know, they'll put up with anything. Yeah, go ahead, whip me some more. Because I'm, I'm, I have freedom. <laughs> okay. I think if we're serious about getting things done, mm -hmm. then we need to think about some things that have been too, we've been afraid to think about. We've been afraid to think about these things. We've been afraid to question freedom. All right? Afraid to question pride. Afraid to question certain things. And I'm saying I'm not saying there's no use for the word pride, sort of thing, but I think they get misused, all right? Because I have seen, you know, because I was a part of that native Indian and proud. All right? I remember the terms. You know, I helped put out there. I did everything I during, well, anyway. I helped, but when I look back at reality, I, I I think well maybe it should have been I'm native and grateful. <laughs> See, because that's my identity, right? And grateful. That's my spirituality. Pride isn't mine. That's a religious, that's a Christian religious vengeful God thing. You know, and all of a sudden, this is how far down they took us. So all of a sudden, when we're trying to get, trying to re-recognize ourselves in the 60s, we took their identity. Indian and proud. And we tried to get our liberation by their terminology. See, our thoughts were thinking one thing, right? But the, but the, the sounds we were making were neutralizing, confusing us. Right? See, and now, and a great many communities, I, if I go in and say this, they're going to get all hot at me because I'm challenging pride, right? And I'm saying all these things. But the reality is, we need to be able to think. We need to be able to think about what's going on. Because the, the, the deal that went down in the 60s and the 70s, or whatever, whatever that power, I mean, baby boom generation thing was about, all that stuff that went down, see, and, and, and now we're old, see. And, and we're patting ourselves on the back for what we did, you know, and, and trying, to, trying to inspire the next generation to do what we did. But I'm going to tell you right now, don't do what we did, all right, because what did we do? We got old, and by, I mean, our intentions, I'm not questioning our intentions or motives. Uh, this is about understanding, all right, but what did we do? We left you a more dangerous beast than the one we encountered. He fed off, the beast fed off of our energy, it got bigger and stronger than and more dangerous than it was when we started out. That's what we did. You know, I mean, and, and we need to understand that reality. This isn't judgmental. You know, you learn from your mistakes. This is about using our intelligence clearly and coherently to recognize and not judge. And what did we do that was our mistake? We didn't think with clarity and coherence. We didn't recognize. We emotionally reacted to what we believed. All right, and and you know, and and the easiest thing to do to control the mass population is make them emotional. Then you can push their button any time. I want if I want to control you, all I got to do is just make you mad enough. And every time you think about me, you know, it's reality. Then you aren't going to think clearly. Not going to think. Fail, right? That's not going to work, right? You get anything that you emotionally react to. 
right? And that's, this whole system is designed, look at the emotional reaction that's going on now, right? And then look at what's being accomplished. We did anything about energy. Now I want to put out here, point this out. When I look at since the 60s, the only two groups of people that have effectively changed consciousness in America, there's only been two of them. And they're the small, and the numbers are small. You know what I mean? But the anti war movement, <laughs> oh, yeah, right. <laughs> anti war movement, you know, that's police get to come and beat you up, and <laughs> right? Things like that when you go out to beat the state, you know. Environmental movement, and I'm not trashing, but it may sound like it, but I'm really not, right? But I look at all the movements. The only two that have accomplished anything that has changed consciousness on a national level are the gays and the lesbians and the medical marijuana. They're the only two. They took what was made unacceptable and not, not tolerable, all right, 30 years ago, and it's now, it's tolerated, all right, and becoming more and more acceptable. Now, you look at them, gays and lesbians and the medical marijuana people, maybe they're, let, let's say they're 10 million of them. You know what, that's 1% of the total population or something. I mean, the numbers, are, but the energy that they put in, see, the thinking that they put in, all right, they, they accomplished when none of the other movements that are going around getting a lot of attention and talking about what they're doing, these two entities accomplished. They changed consciousness on the national level. And so, and when I'm looking at that, that's when I, I started to figure out, hold it, it's about, how, it's the energy we bring. It's not the political solution, it's not these other economic solutions, it's the energy that we bring to it that says how it's going to go. And whatever, and, and with the medical marijuana and the gays and the lesbians, and these two movements, they focus their energy enough, all right, that they accomplish, that they're accomplishing what they set out to do, right? And 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 I think that's something that really needs to be looked at as a model, you know. And now we're going to let's go, right? And and I want to put say this because I want I think we should think about this Occupy movement, all right? Don't do it, <laughs> all right? Here's a little thing about Occupy, because it's a setup. I'm telling you, it's a setup. Do you know, I mean, just a little off the hand thing. Do you know that if you own a cell phone and you were in the Occupy, any Occupy activity, they know who you are, they can identify you. They can identify you because that little RIFD chip that we don't want them implanting in us, we carry it in our pocket. <laughs> right? And they don't care if you turn it off. <laughs> no, all right, turn it off. It's still there. It's, Right? So they can identify anybody that was at any Occupy demonstration by their cell phone. Now I see, all right, so well, they can identify. But now they can look into that cell phone. Oh, look at all the people they call up. <laughs> look at all the people they send texts to. They can identify. See, now they can identify out. Right? Oh, and all those police cameras you see. Well, they, all could, they can also have the, the technology, the face recognition technology is so advanced. All they do is got to get a shot of your eyes. And if you have a picture ID anywhere in the federal or state system, they can identify you to where you live. So there's a double identification. There's nope. a camera right behind you right now. Yeah, well, that's right, but they know me. <laughs> <laughs> we introduced ourselves here as a board. But is it, but see, and everybody, and nobody's catching on. Well, oh, there's dangerous games going on here. You know, people better. <laughs> So I think it was a setup, all right? I think it was a setup because whatever they've got planned for the future, whatever's coming, and they're stepping in, stepping off in that direction. But they want to know who their opposition is. They want to identify their opposition so they know who they're going to take first when the real stuff hits the fan, when they get real serious about what they're going to start doing, all right? They are going to know who to go after. First, all right, and we're handing all right because we believe in freedom. We believe in freedom, all right. So because we believe in freedom, they're they're getting ready to change that. All right, they're getting ready, and and I say this because, and not, and not as a fear monger, but just because I know we can out if we, I know we can influence how things go with clarity. But I'm saying this because see, 
my generation, we're on our way out. <laughs> you know what I mean? They don't know that worried about us. I mean, they may round some of us up because they just don't like us. But they're not that worried about us. All right? I'm saying this. They're after you, the next generation. You're the ones. You're the ones that they're after. And don't, you know, and I'm just going to say it. And you, you, and we'll see where destiny goes. All right? But my own personal feel, feeling is they're, they're getting ready to set up the American gulags. All right? But they're not going to call them gulags. Right, because there are things going on in this country, you know, that 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 politically. Well, let's put it like this: the way the robbing is going on on the planet right now, the way the wealth is being concentrated, there's excessively large numbers of poor. Right, excessively large numbers of poor. Right, and they're going to deal with those excessively large numbers of poor, but not in ways that they, that we believe that they're going to. They're going to round up people. You know, I mean, you know, the largest growing industry in America are private prisons. Largest, it's the largest growing industry in America, the private prison industry. You know, how are they going to take care of the poor? They're going to lock a great many of them up and put them to work for a dollar a day, right? And make them be productive, right? And it, it, these kinds of things are coming. You know, and people need, people really need to start thinking about what's going on, all right? Because we're never going to outfight them. This is not going to happen. All right? But they want us to believe that we have a chance if we fight them. All right? The reality is we can outthink them. But they don't want us thinking about that. They do not want us to think about that. So they will push emotional buttons because they know that we've been emotionally primed to emotionally react. And if we emotionally react, we're not thinking clearly and coherently. All right? Have you ever had an emotional outburst and then later think, well, I wish I'd have said this or I'd have said that. That's me. That's me. So, you know, I'm thinking clear, right? I do it all the time. <laughs> but people don't take me serious anymore. <laughs> you know? yeah. But it's for us to take the responsibility to recognize that we're human beings, take the responsibility to understand if we claim any spiritual identity to anything, to take the responsibility that we can only show that spiritual I mean, we can most effectively show that spiritual consciousness by being conscious of the power of our intelligence and how we use it. Yeah. And we start to take those responsibilities upon ourselves. Right? Then we can change this dynamic. And that's the reality. I mean, on an individual basis, on just individually, make the decision to think as clearly and coherently as possible and see how it changes <laughs> your individual life. Right? Because the thing about when we think, we project electromagnetic energy. Electromagnetic. So if we're tossing low self-esteem, the chaos of low self-esteem in its different fragments as a part of our consciousness, then that's what we're going to attract. If we're putting clarity and coherency out there, then that's what we're going to get back. That's the part, that's the power of the power of the people they don't want us to understand. That we can help. I mean, theoretically, if everyone got up tomorrow and said, I will not enable what I know to be a lie. It will all change. And, it, and so that the occupiers don't misunderstand. I'm not picking on anybody right, or doing any other thing like that, but I do think that this needs to be thought out before we call people out to do stuff. Right? And because I'm saying this because, you know, I think that it's time for the next generation, well, our generation, but I think it's time to think in the terms of non-cooperation versus civil disobedience. I think civil disobedience is a trick. I think it's a trick, it's a trap, all right? And it's how they tag us with the magic markers, all right? So that they can identify who we are, all right? They, they have the electronic know-how now to do that. So I think we should be careful. I'm not saying there shouldn't be any public protest, but I but we should not build whatever it is we're looking for through that because if we, ha if we use our intelligence clearly and coherently, we'll see it doesn't work. If we want to be honest and authentic, it doesn't work. So we need to recognize that. Because civil disobedience, whether it's violent or non-violent, whether it's with permission or not, is cooperating with them. Because it's a part of the lie they tell us that by, by that public protest we can have an influence. So we're cooperating with them. 
right? But we're cooperating with them down to the point of we buy magic markers to make our signs. We buy our little bottles of water. We buy we buy our health food. Or we buy our junk food, you know. And then we go we buy gas. We buy plane tickets. We buy whatever to get to the demonstration, right? So we're economically we're cooperating. With them. If we, and if we do it with permits, we're cooperating. If we do it without permits, they get to come and practice war games on us, all right? Police tactics so they know how to do crowd control, all right? So it's about non-cooperation. To think in terms of non-cooperation. If everything is designed that what I, when I do this, I, I'm feeding the energy or economics or something into their system, then it's time to think, how do I not cooperate? You know, I mean, it can be from, like, as an example, all the time and money that went into the Occupy movement, everything that's defined as energy, time, money, any of it, that went into the Occupy movement, had been put in to telling the American people, look, let's get together, this is about economics, let's get together and not spend any money on one day as a unified force, as a unified group. Let's not spend any money on one day. The objective being get one-third of the population to do it, and they can't ignore you cannot be ignored because was not the Occupy movement basically in reality about middle class being made poor? I mean, this is reality, all right? So, I mean, so if it's about economics, then think in different terms. But going out there, you know, because if I was, if I was the bad guys, I'd have created the Occupy movement just to find you. <laughs> and it's something to be, because they benefited what did the occupiers get as a benefit out of it, other than the emotional rush of being able to emotionally vent? But when we stand here, where we're at now, what was gotten out of it? See, we need to be able to examine and look at our activities, right? But if I go and say this to most places, see, people are going to get off, they're going to get defensive, and I'm going to know what I'm saying. But, you know, but, but I'm putting it out there for those that do. <laughs> and whoever gets it, gets it. But I think non-cooperation. And let's go to another level, because the level that I'm most concerned about on non-cooperation is, I think, an act of non-cooperation is to think for myself. I think a level of non-cooperation is this low self-esteem. Get over that stuff. All right? No, no. See, I grew up in a generation where self-esteem wasn't even a term, so I have a hard time relating to it. self-esteem. <laughs> Right? You know, we didn't talk about self-esteem, you know, they put that in and then they start programming the next generation, well, you have low self-esteem. No, man, you're messing with me. <laughs> That's what the problem is. Oops. <laughs> so we need to look, all right, like ourselves. Understand there's nothing wrong with us. That, you know, and the things that are, that are distorted, well, if we recognize rather than judge, we can alter, we can balance that distortion stuff. To like ourselves. Right? To not use pride as our way through. To truly be grateful. Right? To truly be grateful for what there is to be grateful for. Don't let them lead us around by our pride. Understand the difference between humility and pride. Because humility and pride, they just can't live together. I'm sorry, they can't live together. I come from a spiritual, I still have enough of my spiritual memory left to know that it, my humility was a danger all right, to the religious pride. That's why they went after us. See, so these are things we need to start thinking about things that we just have refused to think about. You know, and that's just, you know, and, and, and about the sexism stuff, I'm going to toss this out there too, you know. For the women, don't blame it all on the men. Women raised us. So everybody's got a role in this. Reality. Everybody's got a role in this. See, this whole division, this whole gender thing. And I'm not making excuses for anybody any way across the deal, all right? But if, but if the man grew up bad, <laughs> or whatever all that stuff is, he had a mother. You know, I hear all these jokes about penis, man, and that, you know. But, but every penis, every woman grew the penis <laughs> before it came out here. So let's all take some responsibility on what's going on as human beings, rather than allow, allowing them to make this other thing. That, anyway, now before I get in trouble, uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm desperate. I want us to think, think about anything, right? I won't even go into democracy. Um, okay, well I'm gonna read a few more of these and uh, quit. <laughs> but and any, but anything that I said that makes sense to you, 
Right on. If I didn't make sense to you, I don't want to hear about it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> because we're just button heads, because if I didn't make sense to you and you're going to come tell me about it, then you're not making sense to me. <laughs> well, senses, I mean, they talk about the sixth sense. I think the sixth, I think common sense is the sixth sense. Because we all have it. I think, that's, I think that's our sixth sense, but we'll go in, that's another time. Uh, is your you. Did you ever have one of those days when you just lost it and it was too much trouble to find it again? Or one of those days everything goes right, you want it to never end because you never know when that day will come back? While whatever's going on is going to go on and there's not much you can do except go with the choices of laugh or scream? With hysteria and euphoria battling for territory and the battleground is your you in a reality of no such thing as non-combatants. Feeling like the victim of a victimless crime wave and whatever that's all about viewed through the shame in other people's eyes. Mixed in what you can't take, can't take back. The scenes of a lifetime replayed, asking your lucky stars for some lucky to thank. And remembering what remembered remembers almost always seems out of control when some forgetting refuses to be forgotten. And a story of all good things must come to an end with without sinners casting stones, just about any temptation is worth succumbing to. And in the transparency of karma and original sin, whatever we say it is, is following us. Does nothing last forever mean it does or doesn't? Who thought up salvation and redemption and why? Who are they that they needed that? What is it that they see or don't see in themselves? Using guilt trips like hits of drugged hallucinations, conceptualizing judgment days into every day as a judgment day on the rampage, like an enemy waiting to ambush us in our minds. Uh, it's a madnesses of sane. Been praying for some protection from the madnesses of sane men. Crossing the borders of insane sounds like sane is farther insane like versions of in, intensified saying with madness as part of the normal. Cold-blooded against warm-blooded, armed with civilized rationalizations. Competitive edges used like swords, inhumanly cutting through humanity. Using smiles as lies, fronting hollows, sounds of what's in our best interest, then they turn excuses into reasons to put on their scariest violent mask. Fear serves them like chattel slave, Chains in the minds rattling invisible. Emotionals don't know what to feel, leaving feelings feeling abandoned. And a pervasive of spreading wounds, scarring imaginations with isolations, but not good enough hidden behind pride's uncompleted needs to devour. <coughs> Feeding the madnesses of sane men, it's like the frenzy of their cannibalism is hidden by their definitions of sanity. Profit before people, industrial wealth, 2% own 70% or something like that. They make the rules that say it's right with the lie of all's fair in love and war. As they radioacted the future's child in a detachment of ancestor realities, disconnect from the past and future, a spirit lost to homicidal self-loathing, running rampant in the subconscious, feeding the madnesses of sane men. Well, anyway, I'm, this is a close with this been given, but I, I appreciate the energy, right? Mm -hmm. We all brought our own energy here and on it. I like to think when we leave, see, we're energized in a different way. That's what it's all about. And, and I, I'm not asking, I don't, I don't want anybody to believe a word I said, right? Because I, I don't need that, right? But if you think about whatever was said, then that's really what it's all about. Right? I'm not trying to get you to like me or not like me. I don't want you following me. Just stay the hell away from behind my back. <laughs> Bad things can happen. <laughs> but thank you for paying attention. <laughs> it's called Ben Given. Enjoy your day. Create a way. Sunshine and rain go together while come and gone play tag with yesterday and tomorrow. In an only forever last forever. Forever is here in this moment. What we do with it is up to us. 
and what we think of ourselves. We can carry our light lighter, or we can carry our light heavier. We can smile and or we can cry. We decide which feelings to use. We are how feeling better feels, or what feeling worse can feel. How low down, low down can get needs our cooperation to play. While our birthright of resilience gives us the creativity we need to create positives to stay even with negatives that keep adding. Fuel to the fire, energies to burn, can be used to lighten the darker. See clear, we are our own torches. Everything that's good is still good, and we've been given the gift of life. Anyway, thank you. Thank you.